Thanks to Hostinger for sponsoring this video. Are you looking for a reliable and affordable VPS hosting? Hostinger offers an exclusive Black Friday deal on their VPS subscription plan. You can get a 12 month VPS hosting plan for just $6.99 per month, which is a whopping 63% discount. But wait, there is more. You can also use my code, which is code with Ari, to get 10% discount on top of the discount that Hostinger offers. Don't miss out on this amazing offer and take your website to the next level with Hostinger's powerful VPS hosting. What's up developers, it's Dari here and welcome back to the ninth video of my Laravel Live Fire video series where we will be looking at how we could deploy our project on hosting or its VPS hosting. Now what is a VPS hosting? A VPS stands for Virtual Private Server, which is a web hosting type that uses virtualization technology to create several virtual servers on a single physical server. Each virtual server works independently with its own operating system, CPU and RAM allowing users to have more control and customization over the server environment compared to shared hosting. Now you might wonder what advantages hosting a Laravel application on a VPS hosting has, since there are so many different hosting options. Firstly, it includes great control and customization over server environments, as each virtual server works independently with its own operating system, CPU and RAM. This allows for more efficient resource utilization and better performance compared to shared hosting. VPS hosting also provides increased security and flexibility with the ability to scale resources up or down as needed. Now, as you might have noticed throughout this entire course, we're going to use Hostinger as our hosting provider. Hostinger is a web hosting provider, but it even adds more to that. You could set up a shared hosting, cloud hosting, VPS hosting, email hosting, and SSL certificates. But those aren't specifically the reasons why you should choose Hostinger, since there are tons of other web hosting providers available on the web. One of the biggest advantages that VPS hosting on Hostinger offers is there, well, let's open it for a moment. Scroll down to the bottom, right here, is their storage and processors. With the cutting edge technology, you can experience rock solid performance for your web projects. And the best part, it's available on industry leading HPE and Dell servers, spread across four continents. You'll have full ownership of your hardware resources thanks to the industry standard KVM virtualization platform. So if you've got an exciting project idea, Hostinger has the technology to make it happen. Secondly, Hostinger offers lightning fast speed and reliable uptime. With their fiber connected infrastructure, Hostinger offers a blazing fast 300 MB per second network speed. This makes VPS hosting a pretty solid choice when it comes to building e commerce gaming platforms, streaming platforms, or pretty much anyone who needs lightning fast website loading speeds. Finally, backups and snapshots. At Hostinger, your data is safe with their automated weekly backups. This means that you can rest assured that your data is protected in case of any unexpected errors or issue. But what if you need to perform major changes to your system? This is where manual snapshots come in. With Hostinger, you can easily create a manual snapshot of your system at any time. This gives you the ability to revert to a previous version of your system within minutes in case anything goes wrong. Overall, having backups and snapshots is crucial when it comes to VPS hosting. With Hostinger's reliable and easy to use backup and snapshot features, you can ensure that your data is always safe and secure. Now, at the moment, you will see that I'm located on the official website of Hostinger on their VPS hosting packages. As you can see, because of Black Friday, Hostinger is offering a 63% discount. So let's scroll down and cover the different packages that they have available. Now, looking at the prices, I got to say that the prices are pretty affordable when it comes to hosting. If you host a Laravel project on cloud hosting, you most likely pay a little bit less or maybe even the same, depending on where you're going to host your project. If we take a look at the features that they have to offer, you will see that the bottom five right here are on all packages. It offers AI assistant, it obviously offers full root access, it offers a dedicated IP address, which basically means that an IP address is assigned to a single virtual private server instead of being shared among multiple servers. This has tons of advantages because it allows for greater control and customization over the server environment, as well as increased security and flexibility. And it finally offers a weekly backup. Dependent on the price, you will receive more bandwidth 
and bandwidth refers to the amount of data that can be transferred between your website and your visitors within a certain amount of time, typically measured in gigabytes per month. This completely depends on whatever you need for your application. A website with low traffic and small files may be fine with just 1 GB of bandwidth, but a website with higher traffic or larger files may require significantly more bandwidth to function properly. Secondly, it offers a different NVMe disk space. NVMe SSD storage is a type of high performance storage technology that uses non-volatile memory access. They also offer a variable of RAM, and RAM stands for random access memory, which is a type of computer memory that allows data to be read and written quickly. It is a crucial component for running applications and programming on a computer. Now finally, they also offer different vCPU cores. vCPU stands for Virtual Central Processing Unit. It's the number of processing cores that are available to your virtual server. The amount of vCPU cores that you will need will depend on the specific requirements of your project, such as the amount of traffic that you expect as the complexity of your application that you will be running. A good starting point is to choose a hosting package that offers at least two vCPU cores and then scale up whenever that's needed. Which kind of brings us to a Dubio. The LiveWire project we created can easily be hosted on a KVM package, but personally, I would choose using two vPCU cores by default. So for now, let's choose the most popular package, which is KVM2. Let's add it to our cart. Now right here, you can see that we could either choose to pay for 12 months, for a single month, which will increase the price significantly, and for 24 months. Now quick note, Hostinger offers a 30 day money back guarantee, which allows you to test it out and see whether any type of hosting suits your requirements. For now, I'm going to choose the 12 month deal which will save me $144. And if we scroll down, you will see that for the second step, we need to create a new account. Now, once you have created your account, you can continue on to step number three, where you could choose the payment method. You'll find an overview of the services that you're gonna purchase. So a KVM2 12 month plan for $83, but with taxes and everything, it will turn out to be $101.49. But right under total, you will see that you can add a coupon code. So let's click on it and let's add the coupon code of code with Dari. And once we click on apply, you'll see that we have received a $10 discount and the price for a VPS hosting for one year comes down to $91. And trust me, that's a great deal to have. For now, add your payment credentials right here and I'll see you back once you have created your account. All right, after purchasing my VPS hosting, I've been redirected to this page where I can start the setup. So let's click on start now. And right here, you will see that it's prompting us with a question asking us to select the location for our VPS hosting. The location of a VPS hosting server can and will have impact on website loading speeds and overall performance. This is because the physical distance between the server and the user can affect the amount of time it takes for data to travel back and forth. So you basically have to select a location closer to your target audience. So it will ensure faster loading time and better user experience. Since I'm currently located in the Netherlands, I'm going to choose the Netherlands right here. Now let's click on continue. All right. And for the next step, it's asking us to choose an operating system. There are three options right here, and one of them is an option that we're not going to use, which is the one to the right, because it's for WordPress. So we're left with the OS with control panel and a plain operating system. Now come on, we're developers. I completely understand that you want an OS with control panel, but I personally prefer to use a plain OS, so I can use a VPS manager that I want to use to connect later on. So in our case, oh, let's click on plain OS. The next step is for the type of control panel we would like to use. And right here, we need to select the operating system for our VPS hosting. You will see three recommended options, but you have a complete list of other options. You have Debian, Rocky, and Ubuntu. Regarding Linux and Ubuntu, they are both operating systems based on the Unix operating system. Linux is an open source operating system that is available in many different distributions. While Ubuntu is a specific distribution of Linux, the choice between Linux and Ubuntu would depend on your specific needs and preferences, as well as the compatibility of the control panel you choose. 
I personally have always used with Ubuntu and I don't really have a specific reason for that. So I just want to stick to that as well. So let's click on Ubuntu. Let's click on continue. For the next step, we need to set up our VPS hostname, our root password, and we have the option to add an SSH key. So we can change our VPS hostname. We can do that later on. Let's create a secure root password. And I'm gonna leave the SSH key option open right now. So let's click on save and continue. It's showing us an overview of what we have selected. The VPS location is in the Netherlands. The operating system is Ubuntu and the host name is well generated by Hostinger. So let's finish our setup and this will take a moment or two. So pause the video and I'll see you back once that's done. All right, as you could see, we're located on our H panel where you will find an overview of the server. On the VPS information tab, you will find your dedicated IP address right here. The status, which is currently running, the VPS uptime, which refers to the amount of time that a VPS has been running without interruption. This is an important metric for assessing the reliability and stability of a server. Currently, it's nothing since we have just installed our VPS. Now we have covered the current operating system and the location and the node version. Now let's click on the second tab, which is SSH access. You will find information on how you can access your application through SSH. And in the final tab, which is plan details, you will find some information that we have covered before. Now, one pretty cool feature about VPS is that you can upgrade it on the go right at the bottom. Well, in other words, it's scalable, meaning that you can upgrade your plan without having any trouble. This needs to be done right here where you can upgrade your VPS. Now, I don't want to cover everything in my VPS because we need to continue on with the installation part as well which needs to be done through a server manager. The VPS manager that I recommend is server avatar. And I'm not going to cover the setup part because it's pretty straightforward. Just create an account, add your payment credentials, and you have access to server avatar. I'm simply going to log into my server right now and continue on. So pause the video and continue on when you're ready. As you could see, I'm currently logged into my server avatar account where I can connect my VPS hosting server. Like I just mentioned, Server Avatar is a VPS manager tool that allows you to manage your virtual private server through a graphical interface. And I think the screen right now should make a lot of sense for most developers. You can connect to a custom server, which we need to do, but you can also choose between all those other hosting providers. Then you need to add your details right here. You need to select the tech stack that you want to use, the database type, and you have the option to install Node. Makes sense, right? The typical setup when you want to deploy a Laravel application, but this time on a VPS server. So let's see how we can connect. By default, the custom option is selected, which is the option that we need. If we click on DigitalOcean, you can see that we can simply link our account to it. But since we're using VPS on Hostinger, we need to set it up manually. So first we need to add our server name which is the server name that Hostinger has generated for us. So let's navigate back to our overview. Let's copy the server name. Now let's paste it inside the server name field. Then we need to enter our IPv4 address. So let's navigate back to our overview, click on VPS information and copy our IP address. Let's paste it in right here. We need to add our root password, which will have set when you installed your hosting server. But if you forgot it, you can simply change the SSH password right here. I'm going to leave it empty right now because it is not hidden. Otherwise, you will see my password. The port needs to be 22. The text tag that we're going to use is a lamp. The database that I want to use is MySQL as well. And I'm also going to add Node.js to my server. So I just cut out the part where I have added my password. So let's click on connect now. All right, as you could see, we're connected to our VPS. Now the installation part might take a bit. So once again, pause the video and I will see you back once this is done. All right, as you could see, our environment has been set up and there are so many configurations you could see and configure right here. From databases to server loads to memory usage, swap memory, application users, and way more. 
I can't cover these all, so I want to continue on by setting up our project. I want to deploy my project through Git. So let's click on back to servers because I want to click on integrations right here because I want to deploy my project through Git. So let's click on Git, where right here you can link your GitHub account. So let me actually quickly delete the previous one that I had. All right. Now, once again, let's click on link GitHub. All right, as you can see, my account has been successfully linked to server avatar. The next thing that we need to do is to create a new application. So let's first click on our server. Let's open the server. Let's click on applications in the sidebar and let's create a new application. So I'm going to make a test domain where my application name will be hosting or LiveWire. The test domain will be hosting our LiveWire as well. We need to select a method and how we want to deploy our project into our application. So we just linked our GitHub repository and I have added my project in Git. So the most obvious reason for me is to use the Git option. Then we need to select the provider, which will be GitHub in my case. The repository type for me at the moment is public. So let's click on public where we simply need to clone the HTTPS URL. So if we navigate back to our repository, click on code, say HTTPS, copy it, navigate back to server avatar, paste our HTTPS URL right here, select the branch that we want to use, which in our case will be master as well. Now we can add a deploy script right here, but I simply want to continue on because it's a simple deploy. So let's click on create application. Whoops, I think I just made a mistake. I had to add a dash right here. All right, create application. Well, apparently I need to enter the branch as well. I thought the default one would be master. Create an application. All right, it's finally loading, meaning that we did something right. All right, it has prompted us with a message saying our Git application has been cloned successfully. But if we think about it for a moment, there are some steps we have missed, right? We haven't created a database and we most definitely haven't set it up. So the way we could do that is clicking on file manager in the sidebar. Let's scroll down for a moment, open the public underscore HTML, where you will see that our Larvor application has been cloned successfully because, well, I'm actually seeing a Larvel project right here. So the next thing that we need to do is setting up a database and adding the .env file for the credentials. Let's navigate back to our application. Let's click on databases in the menu. And let's click on create a new database. So the database name that I want to give it is hosting our underscore live wire. I'm going to set a custom username and password where I'm going to copy the username and I'm going to keep it as it is. And I want to give it a password of something very secret. Now let's click on create a database and give it a moment. As you could see, we have been prompted with a message saying that our database has been created successfully. So what we could do right here is navigating back to our server, open our application, click on the application that we have cloned, open the file manager, Scroll down, open the public underscore HTML. And I'm actually going to toggle the show hidden files checkbox because I need the .env.example file right here. So the first thing that I want to do is selecting it and I want to rename it to .env. Now let's open it. Now let's change up a couple credentials. The database name was hosting our underscore live wire. The username was the one that I copied and my password was test1234 explanation mark. Then we need to change the application name, which is hosting our live wire. And let's actually open a new tab for a moment because we need to set our app underscore URL as well, which you will see as our primary domain right here. So let's copy it, navigate back to the file editor, paste it right here. Now let's scroll down and or up, excuse me. Let's click on save changes. Give it a couple seconds. 
All right, let's save it. If we open a new tab and open the URL that we just copied, you will see that we have been prompted with a forbidden message. This is happening because Laravel doesn't really understand our project structure, and we can change that by creating a new hidden file inside our project named .htaccess. So let's open our file editor again. Let's go back, open the public underscore HTML folder again. Let's create a new file. Let's name it .htaccess. All right, give it a moment. Let's toggle the show hidden files. Let's open the .htaccess file. And right here, I'm gonna paste a piece of code, which I will add as a comment as well, since it is very easy to make mistakes within .htaccess file. So just follow along or copy it from the comment or from my repository. So let's save the changes. Click on yes, I'm sure. Navigate back to our local host and refresh it. You will see that we have received a 500 error and I can tell you why. If we navigate back to our file editor for a moment and go back once again, open the public HTML, show the hidden files in the .env file, you will see that our app key has not been set and that's why we can't open our project. So what I recommend to do is simply navigating back to our HPanel overview, copying our IP address, navigating to the terminal, say SSH, the user root at the IP. I do want to use a fingerprint, so let's say yes. My password is a password that I have added myself. And as you can see, I have been connected. So what I need to do right here is change directories into my home directory. If I perform an LS, you will see a code with Dari directory. So let's say CD code with Dari. If we perform another LS, you will find the directory that we have created ourselves. So let's say CD hostinger, another LS, open the public directory, perform another LS where you will see a Laravel project. So pretty straightforward right here, let's say composer update. All right, it's installing all packages that are required. Then we need to run the php artisan key colon generate command. Finally, we can run the php artisan optimized colon clear command. Once we navigate back to the browser, we are right here, you will see that our project has been opened inside the browser. Now this was it for the final video of my live for your video series. Once again, don't forget to use my discount code of code Udari when you're going to subscribe to a new to a new Black Friday hosting or plan where you will get an additional 10% discount. If you do like my content and you want to see more, I'll leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.